It's now time to put it all together and to come up with a plan for that particular patient at that particular time to help them with their caries risk and their caries management. As the doctor, you need to determine what is needed to do. You need to prescribe medicaments as needed for prevention or oral disinfection, remineralization treatment, or maintenance of the program that you're going to ask the patient to follow. And you prescribe a follow-up or a protocol. In a doctor's office or a physician's office, the patient comes in with a particular problem. The doctor prescribes medications and he prescribes treatments, and then he follows up. If the patient comes back and the desired treatment or result is not achieved, the physician is going to make a change. We as dentists need to look at this at the same responsibility as for us. We need to do the same types of things. We make recommendations. It's not good enough to just say, well, I'll see them in six months and we'll take it from there. High-risk patients need to be seen on a more frequent basis. And if your recommended therapy is not working, it needs to be changed and modified to help that patient. These are the items for planning the treatment using xylitol gum, other xylitol products, fluoride recommendations, antimicrobials, uh, chlorhexidine, betadine, or carbamamide peroxide, nutritional analysis and recommendations. We can treat the cavities, follow-up visits, or a recommended follow-up procedure for that patient. How to use xylitol? How much? 4 to 12 grams per day. How often? At least three times each day, but five or more is preferable, again, depending on the risk. Timing is immediately after eating meals or snacks. Clear the mouth with water or rinse if possible between meals with any 100% xylitol product. You need to select products with high content xylitol, preferably 100% xylitol sweetened products that encourage chewing or sucking are ideal choices. Xylitol candies can be used to achieve the same results. Frequency is a key to the success of xylitol protocol, along with consistency each day, and a dose between 4 to 12 grams depending on the level or severity of the problem. Over 12 grams is probably not any more effective. A core of a xylitol program is to use small amounts frequently throughout the day. This is a form that we use in our office. It actually looks like a normal prescription pad that you would write for any prescription for your patient. We use this form because it carries more weight with the patient. If you hand them a prescription pad, you're telling them that this product is important. I really want you to use this product. It goes through and you can see that E1, which, which relates to the tracking sheet, just says it's effective and you'd use this in probably your level one, level two patients. E2, where we're gonna to try to have them chew five pieces of gum a day or five different times during the day, it's gonna to relate to level two, level three. And if you get into level four and adult patients or 12 and older, then you want them chewing two pieces of gum because you want that high peak xylitol being provided for in, in the oral cavity. A xylitol defense system should include products such as tooth drops, toothpaste, rinses, mints and candies, and xylitol salivary replacers. Combination xylitol fluoride toothpaste for children over six years old. We don't recommend a fluoride toothpaste for children under six, so be careful with the xylitol fluoride toothpaste until they're over six years of age. Fluoride comes in many forms, comes in systemic form, toothpaste, rinses, fluoride varnishes, and dental creams. It's important that you know the concentrations of each of these items so that you're not providing too much fluoride for the patient. So you need the overall fluoride amount that they're going to be come in contact with each and every day. This is the fluoride recommendations currently by the ADA. Again, you can check this in the manual. Oral disinfection with antimicrobials. The antimicrobials that are available are betadine, chlorhexidine, chlorine dioxide, carbamide peroxide. We'll go through those quickly. Antimicrobials, if not combined with a consistent xylitol preventative regimen, such as tooth gels, gums, mints, mouthwashes, toothpaste, then within three months the bacterial levels will be back to their pretreatment levels. I'm going to bring that regrowth slide back up so that you can see kind of a refresher and a reminder that just using an oral disinfection 
does not stop the process. And we do not believe that an antimicrobial regimen should be continued over a long period of time. And that period of time we figure is two years. We believe that repeated applications of these antimicrobials when the patient fails to use xylitol or is failing to cooperate in other manners is inappropriate. The use of antimicrobials should be discontinued at some point as it may be possible that after long-term exposure the oral flora may change and adapt a resistance to the antimicrobial. We do not wait until the restorative procedures are complete to begin using xylitol or antimicrobials. Once we start treatment we do both concurrently. We also believe that a CRT test should be performed in order to evaluate the effectiveness of the program. Once we've set a plan then 12 weeks later, we may take a CRT to see if it's working. It's good for the patient. They get to know where they started and they get to see where they end. Any patient not cooperating in the xylitol portion of the program remains in a betadine fluoride varnish routine for three months, every three months for two years. Betadine protocols for level two, three, and four, all age groups treat the cavity preparation at the time of the cavity before using betadine in the floor of the cavity treat the quadrant in which the procedure was performed with betadine and at the completion of all restorative procedures treat the full mouth with betadine fluoride varnish. Level 3 and 4 apply betadine and fluoride varnish every three months or until a low colony forming unit bacterial count is recorded. Follow up with the CRT in 12 weeks. This is a chart that we use in our office that describes everything I just went through pictorially which is a much easier to see. It talks about initial visit, three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. We call this our high care program. You can see on the left column, you've got your levels one, level two, level three, and level four. And it describes what treatments need to be taken at the particular time, depending on the level that you assess. So on the second row, you can see under each level is the code that you would use. This slide is the same as the one before without the ADA insurance codes placed on it. It makes it much easier to read the chart and apply in a clinical situation.